Hello! Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday... ...smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of this. GLP's Westminster. I did a first impressions video of this last week, and I just recorded the review. Spoilers? I like it. It's very good, very tasty blend. I think it could possibly be a regular English mixture for me, an oriental forward English mixture. It's quite good. Smoking that in my Peterson spigot, sterling silver spigot, a uh, nice billiard, sandblasted, good pipe. I enjoy it a lot. Um, we've got a lot to talk about today. We did not get to hashtag ask stuff and things last week, and so I've got a big sheaf of papers with lots of questions. They've been building up, so we're going to try to get through a lot of these. One thing I need to point out, if you want to contact me, the best way to get a question answered is to go to Twitter, tweet at SAT Bradley, hashtag ask stuff and things, all written out. Um, but a lot of you are using the hashtag ask stuff and things and just saying nice things to me without there being a question. And as much as I appreciate those nice things, thank you very much, you've got to ask a question. Don't abuse the hashtag. That's incorrigible. All right? So just to let you know, um, no, and I do appreciate all the nice things that have been, that have been tweeted at me on uh, Twitter. I try to at least, I don't know how all that, all that works. I like them. Sometimes I retweet them. Sometimes I respond to them. I don't know. Hopefully you guys don't feel as though I'm neglecting you. Um, but I also grabbed some questions that have been sent to YouTube, some comments, so a, a nice grab bag variety of different things for me to talk about, things that you guys want me to talk about. I have other things written down in the old book here. Oh, I'm not timing. I need to time. I should be timing. Let me hit my stopwatch here. Stop it. Stop. Nope. Stop it. My iPhone's doing weird things. Stopwatch start. There we go. Um, I wrote down some things, and I guess this also has to do with community... Uh, you guys out there, the viewers. One thing that I meant to mention quite a while ago, when you post a video on YouTube, there are things called community contributions where people can um, maybe translate your, the title of your video, the description of the video. Some people will actually bother putting subtitles for the entire video in different uh, languages. And then you get a notification that somebody has done that and then you can sort of look it over. I mean, if you don't speak the language into which it's been translated, it's sort of hard. So what they'll do is show the original, they'll show the translation, and then they'll show a Google Translate version of their translation. So I guess it's supposed to sort of show you how closely it matches what you had originally done. And it's been really interesting that a bunch of my videos, a bunch of my pipe tobacco reviews have been translated into Dutch. I don't know who's doing it. Um, I'm not sure why. I think it's really cool that people are bothering to do that. I don't know if it's several people or one person, but that anonymous Dutch person out there, I'm going to assume you're Dutch. Thank you very much. That's very cool that you're bothering to translate these into Dutch. I've seen a couple in Spanish, at least the titles and the, the video descriptions. I don't know if anyone has done full subtitles into Spanish, but that's really cool. I really appreciate that. Um, if any of you out there are multilingual, bilingual, and you feel like translating something, Go ahead. I think it would be really cool. Let more people uh, experience the channel. I would assume that a lot of Dutch people just speak English anyway, but maybe I'm being stereotypical or something, but it seems like a lot of them do. Um, and then we've got some future reviews coming up. The next uh, pipe blend that I was going to be taking a look at was going to be Bengal Slices, but we might have something a little more interesting on the way. Um, I don't want to say too much. I think we'll leave it as, I don't know if I'm going to do two videos, maybe a box opening and then a review. I probably won't do a first impressions, or maybe I will just do a first impressions because I don't know if it's the kind of blend that I will want to smoke for an entire week. And you'll probably see why when you see what this blend is, but it's very unique, very interesting. You should definitely check, uh, check in on the channel in the future for that. I think you're going to like it. Um, some other just kind of odds and ends that I've been ends that I've been dealing with, not dealing with. It sounds like a horrible chore, but I've been trying to set up my little like streaming gameplay station so I can do more stuff and things, plays, videos without having a huge hassle. Like uh, I would have to string 
like dozens of feet of wire from my computer into my living room if I was gonna try to capture anything from a console. And then I was also trying to capture on my computer. So it was all weird. And so I'm trying to sort of consolidate everything, get a two monitor set up. So that's been fun. And I've been getting some components. Like I just got a fancy gaming keyboard, like a mechanical keyboard. So most of you and almost everyone uses a computer keyboard that just has those rubber mats with the little protrusions that make contact with uh, the circuit or whatever under there. It's very technical, I'm sorry if I, if I lost you there. Um, and they're fine, they work fine, but for gaming, a lot of people like to use mechanical keyboards that actually use mechanical switches. And so I grabbed one of those and I've been fooling around with it and it is just so tactilely pleasant to use that computer. I'm just like tick, 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 all the time, even if I don't have anything to type and I don't, I don't type well, I'm not good at typing but it's just so enjoyable. It's one of the most pleasant things to fool around with. And I hope I don't wear it out too quickly because I'm just <laughs> on my keyboard. Then I got that new graphics card, like I mentioned, um, tried to up the RAM a little bit. I'm trying to get everything going. But the big thing is, is I'm getting a new desk because I don't have room for a multi-monitor setup right now on the desk that I'm using. It has, it's a fairly sizable desk, but then it has a big hutch over top. And I kind of need that because I have all these things sort of mounted on that hutch, speakers and a webcam and all this stuff and lights, but um, it doesn't leave me room for two monitors. So I found sort of this industrial style office desk on eBay that is coming soon. It's like six feet wide, it's a big desk, but I'm dreading the thought of trying to get rid of all the sort of electronic detritus that has gathered on the desk that I've been using for years and years. I'm gonna have to just, I'm gonna have to tear the whole thing apart because it's giant. And I think I assembled it in my apartment. I'm gonna have to tear it all apart and then probably break it into pieces and get rid of it. And then I'm just gonna have this huge mass of crap that has built up over years and years that I'm gonna have to sort through. I'm gonna have to get rid of a lot of stuff. And then it's gonna be fun though. I'm, I'm the kind of person who enjoys not necessarily organizing, even though I can enjoy that as well, but like setting up. I like setting up a workstation or setting up an area. So I'm gonna have this brand new desk. I'm gonna to try to probably make my own hutch for it, um, a place where I can mount two monitors and then speakers and shelving and everything, and just really set it up nice. And then that will facilitate me being able to record stuff and things plays videos maybe a little more easily. Um, I don't know if that's interesting to you at all, but whatever. Now, because we have so many hashtag ask stuff and things questions, I better get to them right now. We're going to start, let me see, I need a pen so I can know what I have looked at and what I have not. Um, okay, so this one is sort of a question. This was actually, I believe a message or maybe it was a YouTube comment. This is from Brian Quilty. It says, um, he was talking about one of the videos I was doing saying that I should do one of the ancestor tests. I, I was mentioning the DNA tests in the last Sunday smoke. But then he says, <clears throat> I've been a pipe smoker for longer than you have been alive. And I just love my, I never know how to pronounce this properly, butts choking, butts chokan, choking pipes. It's, it's a French company. They make good pipes. I have some Stanwells, some Savinelli's, a Dunhill, Peterson's, but my butts pipes from the 70s are my favorite pipes. Why do so many people talk negatively about this line of pipes? Um, I don't know. I actually haven't personally heard people bad-mouthing butts pipes. I have never smoked one myself, but if anyone in the comments has personal experience, leave it in there below in, in the comments section, that place under the video, write something so Brian can maybe get some feedback because I'm afraid I know absolutely nothing about Butts Pipes. This is from, from Grafton, and he's basically giving his own experience with McClellan blends. I had mentioned how sometimes I feel like the way that McClellan processes their tobaccos, that they sort of have a texture of like a packing peanut sometimes, and sometimes they're hard to dry out. They seem to retain moisture a lot more readily than other blends. And he says, I completely agree with your comments on McClellan blends and how they can feel like the texture of a packing peanut. I've voiced these criticisms to some in the pipe smoking community only to encounter some resistance. McClelland is beloved by many and a handful of blends. 
uh, Samovar, Navy Cavendish, Classic Samsung, I think are superb. They resist drying out, and when they're dried, they resist packing because of their cut, like a chunky cut with no flexibility, and they dry my mouth out like crazy. I'm about to swear them off completely. They just do not perform to the, to the caliber of Hearth and Home, Peace, or Dunhill. I'm curious if there's any way we can find out what sort of processing occurs to make their blend so finicky. Thanks for the vid, man. Take care. Yeah, I don't know if anyone has any insider information. There definitely are some McClellan blends that I like very much, but there is sort of a tendency towards that strange texture. Um, I would assume it's just a lot of humectant, uh, propylene glycol or something like that in the blends. I don't know exactly what it is, but if anyone knows, put it in the comments. This is from Endel Rondoja. Um, now, this is an interesting question because a lot of people will write in to me and ask me for advice on getting a particular pipe or a particular line of pipes. And I'm always kind of leery about giving that sort of advice, but we'll see. I might have something useful to say for this question. Bradley, I'm considering getting a Peterson B42 Darwin Standard System P-Lip as my first Peterson pipe. I have three good briar pipes, one a generic made in London, England, and a GBD, both of which I purchased new about 40 years ago, wow, and a Stanwell Knight I purchased about 20 years ago. I also have a Meerschaum, a Calabash, and two La Peltier clay pipes, all around 25 to 30 years of age and one newer corn cob, but I think I'm overdue for a newer, nice smoking, large capacity briar pipe. And after watching many of your videos, my interest in Peterson pipes has grown. Do you believe that the Peterson Darwin system pipe would be a good choice, or would you have other recommendations? Thanks in advance for any suggestions you might have, and thanks for your videos. I've enjoyed them very much. Thank you. Um, the Darwin is interesting. From my understanding is that it's basically the same grade as a deluxe system pipe. So. System pipe is standard, premier, and deluxe are the three lines. The standard has, um, uh, I guess the briar is supposedly of slightly lesser quality than the premier and the deluxe. And then there's a difference in the stinger inside uh, that screws on to the end of the mouthpiece or to the stem. And usually the deluxe pipes have a silver accent around the shank. So I think the Darwin is basically like a deluxe, a nicely grained silver accent. It has an aluminum stinger on the stem. And I have enjoyed my deluxe system pipes quite a bit, so I don't see any reason why you wouldn't enjoy a Darwin pipe as well. And as far as the P-Lip goes, I don't mind either way. It could be P-Lip, it could be Fishtail. This particular Peterson has a Fishtail stem. It's fine with me. Uh, I don't mind the P-Lips either. Either or, in my opinion. So yeah, go for it if you think you're gonna like it. But again, each individual pipe smokes differently, so I can't tell you, yes, this pipe will be guaranteed good, but for the most part, the P Peterson System pipes that I've had, and I've had several, have all been quite good smokers. This is from Rapid Raptor 35 He says, Hey Bradley, I wanted to point you in the direction of some interesting pipe tobaccos that I think would make for a cool review. Just For Him sells a series of bulk tobaccos with a Tolkien theme. They have a sampler for 10 bucks, and I think it would be cool if you did a mini review for each one. They give you a quarter ounce of each blend, so it would be more suited to your first impressions format than your full reviews. Anyway, hope you have a happy new year, and I look forward to more great videos. Um, I am aware of these blends, and people have asked me about them in the past, asked me to do reviews. I might. I've looked into them. There are a few blends that I might consider. Um, I've heard kind of mixed reviews on them. And uh, I don't know, the sampler pack might be something interesting for 10 bucks. Yeah, I will definitely look into that and we will see. Okay, now we're getting into some Twitter questions. This is from TJ. He says, will you review some Boswell's English blends? Yeah, I'm sure I probably will. I don't know why I haven't yet. Just one of those things where I'm not purposefully ignoring certain blends or certain manufacturers. You just get into a groove sometimes and you follow a path uh, one thing leads you to another, one blend leads you to another blend, and you just sort of end up getting on this weird trajectory. I'm sure I'll get to some Boswell blends at some point. This is from Micah. He says, I enjoy the diversity of your channel. I came for the pipe talk, stay for the puns and notebooks. Do you seller tobacco? Aging tobacco is a popular topic on other channels forums, but I haven't heard you mention your thoughts about it. Um, I don't have much really to say about cellaring. I haven't done too much cellaring. I have some blends that have been put away for a while. Um, I haven't really been a like true pipe hobbyist for long enough for me to feel as though, you know, once 
10, 20 years passes and I have some blends that have been cellared for that long, then maybe I can have some more firsthand experience to go on. I have some Elizabethan tins that have been around for four or five years, but I haven't touched them yet. But no, I'm not huge on cellaring. I just don't really have a lot of room either for one thing. But there are definitely channels out there. I, I know long ago I mentioned a particular YouTube pipe community guy, and I can't remember his name now, but he had a whole great series on cellaring. He was seemed very expert on the subject, knew a lot about what happens to different component tobaccos when they've been cellared for different lengths of time. So it's worth checking out YouTube. Maybe someone in the comments will remember that guy in those videos. Um, this is from Matt Kaj, uh, Kajfez. Kajfez? Uh, wonder what your situation is with smoke inside. Are you in a place where smoking inside is okay? Do you use an air filter? Um, I do not smoke in my apartment. I'm not allowed to smoke in my apartment. Um, I'm sure I could probably get away with it if I wanted to, but I just feel like if those are the rules and that's where you live, then you probably shouldn't be flaunting those rules. Flaunting? Flaunting? Whatever. Um, but I have definitely lived in places where I did, and it wasn't a big issue. Um, pipe smoke smells good, in my opinion, and it doesn't seem to linger. It doesn't get that really horrible stale smell that cigarette smoke seems to get. But yeah, just get some airflow, get some fans, whatever. Um, just be cognizant of your neighbors and people around you. Uh, this is from Justin Moy. Uh, what? Okay. May I use your branding as a tag for my YouTube channel? Thanks either way. Uh, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> I can't stop you. Uh, this is from MPS051960. Hey, I have a question because I've had reaction. After consuming some tobacco, I'll drink a Coca-Cola, and my tongue will burn at least sensitive. Thanks. Best regards. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about here. Sometimes you can have a reaction based upon what you're smoking and what you're drinking. Coffee, for me, has never given me that kind of reaction, but sometimes pop, soda pop, will. Uh, and it depends on the blend. It, it was way more prevalent when back in the old, old days when I smoked aromatics more more often um, and then drinking any sort of carbonated beverage that would actually get me this horrible tingle and sometimes some pain. <clears throat> so it basically depends on the pH balance of your mouth, the acidity or the base quality of whatever you're drinking. It just depends. So if Coke makes your tongue burn, uh, don't drink Coke after you've had a pipe. This is from Darth Forge. Uh, I kind of strangely enjoyed your random rant about random food. I think it would be cool to hear your thoughts about random food, or if you're trying something new from time to time. Just a suggestion. All right. Uh, that was not a question, but I'm going to allow it this once. This is from Brimker. Do you own or have you ever owned a Meerschaum pipe? A review? I liked your Falcon review. I do have one Meerschaum. Um, I've never smoked it because it cracked immediately in the shank and it's just sort of decorative. It's, it's a Turkish Meerschaum. It looks sort of like, uh, there's a, a particular term for a bearded gentleman in traditional garb. I can't remember what it's called, but that's what he looks like. Um, I have nothing against Meerschaum. I'm sure I would enjoy one if I had one, but I've just never delved into them very much. Uh, this is from, man, there are a lot. We're gonna get through as many as we can here. Uh, this is from Tony, Tony Arino. Is that Greek on your arms? What's it say? And then we have another one from John Vilvardi. Villardi. Hey Brad, what, did you, what do the tattoos on your forearms say? I have answered this question in the past. It was in a past Sunday smoke. Um, if you do a little research, you'll be able to find that. This is from at Catch Fresh. Tried the Elizabethan and enjoyed it. Thank you for the recommendation on your channel. Now riddle me this. If you were to make a name, make and name your own blend, what would it be? And would you call it Mr. Bog from high school? That was in reference to a, an anecdote from a Sunday smoke recently. Um, if I were to make my own blend, I have no idea. I would probably make a vapor, <clears throat> a nice periki vapor, something with some red Virginias, some matured Virginias, nice, deep, dark Virginia flavor with some perique in there. And the, the name, I don't know, Bradley's Best, something like that. Not to get too narcissistic about it. Uh, Theron Mathis. I need to clear my throat. <coughs> All right, Theron Mathis is just being complimentary, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Theron. And then Alioth Senator, could you show us your pipe collection? 
Um, maybe. I don't really have a collection. I have about 12, 13 pipes that I smoke regularly. You've seen most of them just throughout the channel as, as I smoke them on the channel. When you look at reviews, when you see Sunday Smokes, um, maybe it would be worth doing a video, maybe not. I'll keep that in mind though. Earl Smith, love the interpretive dance on the Sunday Smoke, thank you. Any thoughts on doing reviews of tobacco that has been cellared and comparing it with fresh? So that sort of has to do with the question we had earlier. Um, I may do that, eventually I might crack open one of my Elizabethan tins that's been uh, aging for several years. I think if we finally do get to that point where Elizabethan gets taken off the market, I think I will have some sort of uh, a going away party where I have a blend. I think I have I think I have a tin that's about five years old maybe, and I will pop that, smoke that, compare it to a fresh tin, and uh, see how it compares. We have a train, we're gonna just power through here, people. Um, we have one from Darth Forge, where he is just being complimentary. Thank you, Darth Forge. We have one from at Sound City 606 Hi, Bradley. Good job on your channel. I would love you to review some Dan tobacco blends, especially Gordon Pym or Hamburger Beer Master. Um, I guess he did not put the hashtag ask stuff and things, so I will allow this. Uh, it wasn't really a question, just a suggestion. But yes, I will keep Dan tobacco blends in mind. And then... We're gonna break for a second for the train to go by and then we'll be right back. All right, I think it is done blowing its horn. All right, this one is from Web Rookie, and it seems like it's about my hat, the hat I'm wearing right now. All right. <clears throat> Ugh, you are much too old to wear that goofy hat inside. You aren't 12, knock it off. <sighs> Nothing makes a person appear than they are or appear more desperate to hold on to days gone by than an old person trying to stay on trend. Stop it! Exclamation point. Your best days are behind you. High school is over for you. Moving on, I think that is it for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question, tweet at SAT Bradley, hashtag ask stuff and things. I will do my best to answer all the questions I receive on Twitter and I will try to pick a few out of the comments and the messages as well. But we've been going long. It is time to end this week's Sunday Smoke. But until next week, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.